Note to self. Should I ever decide to pioneer a new kind of architecture, avoid abrasive words such as brutalism. It is perhaps because of the word itself that projects like Habitat 67 are not more popular. Designed by architect Moshe Softy for the Montreal World Expo in 1967, the concrete building units were prefabricated and stacked on site like Lego blocks in order to create an urban housing project that still included a lot of light, a lot of air, and a lot of green space. This aspect of brutalism was pioneering a new way to build, but as an engineer once told me, you don't want to be a pioneer. They're the ones who take all the arrows. Brutalism is that branch of modernism that goes extra far in trying to strip a building of sentiment and decoration. Brutalism says that if your building is made of concrete, show the concrete, show the texture and seams of the forms, show how the weather can stain the concrete with rain and dirt. The effect is bold, monumental, harshly raw, and to me, attractive. I have said so about Marcel Brewer's Whitney Museum in Manhattan. As a unique building in a campus or urban context, brutalism can be dynamic. If an entire city was built that way, it could be depressing. And that is what Habitat 67 was to some, a completely brutalist neighborhood. It was heralded and derided when it was first built as both a bold experiment but a dismal living aesthetic. It is perhaps saved by the fact that they did not build as many units as originally planned. Yet half a century later, the experiment is still a success because we have a free market. The complex attracts people who appreciate the exterior concrete aesthetic, the park-like setting, and the river views. The residents tend to be upscale and have the income to gut and rehab the interior and sometimes combine different cubes together. So the amenities living on the inside are far from brutal. So you will find that Habitat 67 has escaped the doomed projects of socialist housing in communist countries or bland subsidized housing in the USA, which often get demolished after 50 years. A similar public building, also built in 1967 by Paul Rudolph, the Orange County government building in Goshen, New York, came close to demolition, surviving by a one vote margin in the county legislature. The split ribbed block building in multi-layered stacks with large windows created a jazzy combination of spaces and facade elements with just enough visual acrimony to manifest joyful dissonance. While stunning, the building did not age well. Hurricane and flood damage aggravated its abandonment after years of poor maintenance, and the public building could not easily be adapted for handicap codes, which were not even a consideration in the 1960s. While another Paul Rudolph building in Boston faces demolition, the Orange County building was saved. An addition was made to provide modern offices for the county. This addition does not mimic the Rudolph style, so here history is being preserved and not duplicated in a Disney World fashion. But a small portion of the original building was demolished to make room for the new building. The remaining portions are being renovated but that still has not stopped the purists. Here's where I think buildings are a lot like people. When they're new and young, it's easy to admire them. But they have to get past middle age. And reach 80 years before they become respected and venerated. Both Rudolph's and Safdie's buildings have a hard complexity which gives the work its visceral greatness but can make them unyielding and difficult to modify. Architects rarely envision their work as being changed or adapted, so that is not usually considered as a design factor. At Habitat, most residents embrace the limitations and work within them to create new spaces. At Orange County, the renovating architects, Clark Patterson Lee, attempted a Solomon-esque split the baby solution. Some demolition, some renovation, and some new. Such a solution will disappoint most people but it might have been the most realistic approach. I am often the second architect on a building project, so I am perhaps more open to the idea that buildings must change, they must grow organically, or they will die. 
sometimes like people. When I come across a building project then, I ask myself, what is great about this building? And if I find it, I try to do the alteration, the renovation, and the addition in a fashion that I believe the original architect would appreciate. Occasionally I run across a building that has no redeeming value whatsoever. In that case, I feel free to design in such a way to restore it to a greatness it never had in the first place. You get the sense that people living at Habitat 67 know they are participating in greatness. They are there by choice, and if they find life they are limiting in any way, it must be worth it. In that sense, they might be like the characters who inhabited the great citadel of Granada and made their way into Washington Irving's book, Tales of the Alhambra. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.